Today we're gonna to talk about gain staging and I'm gonna show you guys how to get a great signal from your microphone all the way into your DAW. True Sound Studios is in your ears. Hey guys, what is up? I'm Wiesna, and as always, we're here at my studio, True Sound Studios, and today we get to talk about a topic that I feel is really important, especially to the producers and artists and musicians who are recording in their bedrooms. Gain staging seems to be yet another thing that is really kind of overlooked when it comes to the recording process. A good majority of my clients never actually come to the studio, but rather they just send me their files that they've recorded in their own studios and they send them to me so that I can mix and produce and master their tracks to really give it that professional edge. But something I've noticed is that these artists, vocalists are sending me files that are just really quiet. They were recorded really quiet and I know it's not intentional, but today I want to show you guys how to get a loud, clean signal from your microphone all the way into your DAW. Okay, so let's take a real quick look at the gear and let's get right into this video. So up top is a Trident S20 dual microphone preamp. So this is two microphone preamps in one unit and they are both solid state mic preamps. And on the bottom is a DBX 266 XL compressor. So this is a two channel compressor. And the interface we'll be using today is a Lexicon Omega. And what's important about this interface is that it has line inputs. So let's just quickly talk about how this gear is all connected to each other. The condenser microphone plugged in through an XLR cable is plugged into the input of the Trident mic preamp. Then the output of the Trident mic preamp then runs into the input of the DBX 266 XL compressor. The output of the DBX 266 XL compressor then runs into the input of the Lexicon Omega interface. Okay, so first we're gonna go ahead and turn on our 48 volt phantom power. And this is what is used to power the condenser microphone. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is adjust the gain knob. So we're gonna start turning this up until we see our meters here get pretty close to that zero. So I'm gonna keep turning up and talking to the mic. Hey, check, hey, 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 check, check, hey, one, two. Okay, so that's pretty close. So. We want the peaks really to hit zero. Now, because this is a solid state microphone preamp, so it does not have a tube in it, um, driving this harder is not gonna get us necessarily any better of a signal. We're not gonna get any more like tube saturation out of this. So, so for any solid state mic preamp, which is pretty much what you're gonna find these days um, under $1,000, um, we're gonna try to get this signal meter to pretty much the loudest part should be right around there, that zero when it lights up white. Hey, check, hey, so I'm rapping, hey, check, check, hey, and I'm check, hey. So that's pretty good. So that means our loudest signal is pretty much at zero. So that is really all we need to do for the mic preamp is uh, we've got the signal loud enough to the point where we're hitting somewhere right around zero at the max volume. Now what's important about turning this up loud enough is there's something called signal to noise ratio. So the louder we can get this mic preamp before we get a whole bunch of hiss, it's going to overall affect the amount of noise to signal ratio as we go to the compressor and then finally to the interface. Now, if you have a really quiet singer and you end up having to turn the gain knob up even more or potentially all the way up, you're gonna find that every microphone preamp has its own self noise. So it's how much electrical noise is actually inducted into your vocal signal. So this particular mic preamp is, is pretty quiet, but we do wanna make sure that the source or whatever we are recording is gonna be loud enough that we don't have to turn this up all the way and get a lot of self noise. Okay, so now we can move on to the compressor. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and turn our threshold all the way to zero. So the reason we put the threshold all the way to zero is this is another way to determine how much signal is coming out of the mic preamp and into our compressor. So if you didn't have these meters up here indicating how much signal is coming out of this mic preamp, and what I'll do is just go ahead and cover these meters up so that we can't see them. So let's say we we have no meters on our mic preamp. What we can do is on the compressor, 
setting the threshold to zero, and then just turning up the ratio just a little bit, you're gonna notice it's just starting to gain reduce, which means we are pretty much getting zero decibels into our compressor, which is a really great place to start. This way we know we're getting enough signal coming out of our mic preamp and coming into the compressor. Okay, so now that we're sure that we have a good amount of signal coming into our compressor, I'll go ahead and take off that piece of tape that was covering the meter. And so now what we can do is let's get to a ratio on our compressor that is somewhat typical to use for vocals. Now, I like to use a compression ratio of two to one and at the very most four to one. I find that that is more than enough signal. Um, three to one is generally something I start with and then depending on the singer or how much, you know, how non-controlled the vocalist is, I will go ahead and either increase this or decrease this. So as you can see here, um, when I'm talking into this, we're getting like the max 10 decibels of gain reduction on our compressor. So that's a little bit much for a vocal to sound pretty natural. So what we wanna do is on our threshold here, we can go ahead and turn this up a little further so that we get somewhere around three decibels of gain reduction. So maybe somewhere right around there is pretty good. So. If this is my normal vocal level, when I get really loud, check, check, you can see it's gain reducing more, but on, on average, it looks like it's hitting just about three decibels of gain reduction. So here in my studio, I think that three decibels of reduction is pretty good. Now, obviously this is up to you and you can re gain reduce it more if you want, but just remember we're trying to control the signal going into our DAW um, enough so that this compressor is doing something, but also that it's not compressing way too much and we're actually ruining the sound before it even gets in the DAW. We also want to make sure that it's compressing enough because otherwise this compressor is really not doing too much for you to help out with your overall vocal level inside of your DAW. So another thing at this point we can go ahead and do is we can change the attack and release settings on the compressor. Now for me, I like the, the release to be a little slower. I still like to be pretty fast because I want this to be fairly transparent. And for the attack, I generally like to have it fairly quick. And the reason for that is if you have a vocalist who is not very well controlled with their dynamics, so if they um, really over accentuate some notes, like a lot of guys would do the please come back to then the puh, and they just push really hard on those vocals. Having the attack up really quickly is gonna cut off those transients so that you don't have big spikes in your audio and what could potentially be in the end is some digital clipping, which is obviously what we're trying to avoid. So the last thing we need to pay attention to is over here on our output section. When we run anything into a compressor, what it's doing is actually reducing the overall volume. What it says right up here, gain reduction, that is actually reducing the overall level. So what you might find is we might have had a good enough signal up here, but now that it's hit the compressor and it's being reduced by about three decibels, you might actually have to physically increase the overall output on the compressor because we've turned it down and now we need to make up for it. So it's also known as makeup gain on some compressors. On this DBX, it is output gain. So a great way to check if you're losing too much signal from your compressor is to simply bypass it. So when you bypass it and all of a sudden this signal is now louder, that means you're losing some signal from the compressor and you need to turn up the output gain. Okay, so finally now the output of the compressor is now going to run into the line input of our interface. So up top here, once again, we have the Lexicon Omega. As you can see up top, it has two mic inputs. Now that is not what we wanna use. We want to use a line input. So as you can see right here, we have one, two, three, and four inputs. So that output of the DBX compressor then runs into line one here.
And what we want to do is we want to make sure we get somewhere around negative seven decibels coming into our interface. So then what we need to do is go ahead and turn up the line input on our interface until we get to about negative seven decibels max coming into the interface. Somewhere right around there, oh, that's a little too loud, check A. Hey, check, hey, one, two. Somewhere around here maybe looks better. So it's that little orange light that comes on is negative six decibels, which is just a little bit too much signal, but we can just turn that down. Now, if there is no gain knob for your analog input, you can very simply adjust the output of the compressor to be able to change the level that is going into the audio interface. So this LED meter actually only shows us the analog signal, which unfortunately is different from the digital signal. So that's why we now need to go ahead and take a look at our DAW and see how much signal is truly being sent through the interface and into the DAW. So this is a test using the MXL 4000 condenser microphone running into the Trident S20 dual microphone preamp running into the DBX 266 XL compressor, and finally going into the Lexicon Omega interface. Okay, so you can see going through this entire vocal chain, we are getting right around negative six decibels max coming into our DAW. So if our peak, our loudest point is at negative six decibels, it means probably on average we're getting about negative 10 decibels coming into the DAW. Now I think that is a perfect amount of signal coming into the DAW. Um, it allows us to use plugins, especially like the tape machine and some of the plugins that will model analog signal. It'll really give you more than enough signal to make sure you can drive those plugins and really get that analog signal sound. Now, something very important to know is we are using a compressor. So this compressor is helping to regulate that amount of signal that we are sending to our DAW. So if you are not using a compressor, you definitely wanna have even less signal coming into your DAW because you're not gonna have that compressor regulating that signal as much. So you're gonna find that when you're recording, your peaks are really gonna jump up and could go as much as an extra 10 or 12 decibels on top of whatever signal you're already sending to your DAW. So sending less signal to your DAW is opening up of what's called the headroom, or essentially how much room you have until you get to zero. So in the case of not using a compressor in your vocal chain, you might wanna to try to shoot for negative 10 decibels being the max going into your DAW, so that when you do have those really loud parts in a vocal performance, it shouldn't be getting to zero in clipping. So another reason for sending this much signal into your DAW is if you do want to send your tracks off to get mixed at another studio, just like here at True Sound Studios, because I use an analog console, an analog mixing console, I can deal with really loud signals and it generally adds a little bit more character because I can drive the preamps and the transformers to just get a better, a little bit fatter, warmer sound. And last, even if you are gonna mix your own vocals in your own studio, sending enough signal into your DAW is going to lower the signal to noise ratio, which is sometimes known as the hiss that is often in a vocal performance that just doesn't have very good gain staging. So what you guys just heard and saw recorded into the DAW was the exact setup that we've been working with this entire time. So just once again, I really want to make this really clear that, you know, you guys should be trying to aim for negative seven decibels going into the DAW. So obviously you don't want the signal to be so loud that it's clipping. So as soon as it gets to zero, that is called clipping. It's also known as digital clipping and it creates like this staticky broken sound. And it might just be for that split second, but that is something that I cannot fix, you cannot fix. 
The only way you can actually fix it is to go back and re-record it so that it doesn't clip. So if you guys send me tracks, or you send another studio tracks that has a few spots where it's been clipping, those parts unfortunately are not able to be fixed and that will be permanently part of your vocal track or your guitar track or your drum track or whatever whatever instrument that was recorded that got clipped. So with that being said, we do not need to record vocals or whatever at zero. It doesn't need to ever get to zero, but it shouldn't also be at negative, you know, 20 decibels. And unfortunately, that is really what I've been finding and I think I know the reason why, you know, certain artists are just recording these vocals really quiet. So what you need to understand is that signal that you're sending to the DAW that you're actually physically recording in your DAW is really important that we keep it in that range that I was talking about. So what I think is happening is that the artists are turning down the gain on the mic preamp because it's too loud in their headphones and they're just not sure of any way of how to turn down their voice in their headphones so that they can hear the music and their voice at the same time. So that's where we get into monitoring. Monitoring is the level that you're hearing back either through your headphones or through your monitor speakers. That is a totally separate level. So we don't want to disturb that beautiful level that we work so hard at getting between that negative seven and negative five decibels. But now we need to have a second monitoring system that is gonna allow us to adjust the volume that's either coming through the headphones or through the monitor speakers. So on the Lexicon interface that we are using, there was a knob labeled direct and playback. Now this on other interfaces um, might be called a mix knob. It might have a dry and a wet something along those lines. So for example, if we turn that knob all the way to direct, we would actually only hear the vocal in our headphones and we wouldn't be able to hear any of the music or the beat playing back from the DAW. Now in the other case, where we turn the knob all the way to playback, we would hear none of the vocal mic in our headphones. We would only hear the beat or the music being played back from the DAW. So with those two extremes, we need to find some place in the middle where we can hear our vocal loud enough in our headphones, but we can also hear the beat loud enough in the headphones. And by using that knob, you can adjust either the beat playing back from the DAW or go more towards the direct so we can hear more of the microphone coming into our headphones. So obviously not every single interface is gonna have this, you know, essentially direct playback knob on it. You might have a separate interface that comes up on your computer screen that allows you to change the levels. And this is not going to affect the level that's going into the DAW. Monitoring is kind of like if you've ever performed before, there's a separate mix that comes out of the main speakers that essentially everybody hears. And then there's a separate mix where the monitors are on stage so that the musicians or the artist or the performer can hear whatever they choose comes out of the monitor speaker. So this is two different mixes. All right guys, so I know this is kind of complicated, but I hope I explain this well enough that you guys can use this information to make your recording sound even better. So thank you for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, click that like button and consider subscribing for more content. So not only do I make YouTube videos, but I also produce tracks and I can mix and master your music. So once again, thank you for watching this video. I'm Wiesna and True Sound Studios is in your ears.